Okay, let's start the meeting and please write your name to the agenda. And today we like to uh, continue the phase one, phase zero, phase one to five discussion. And uh, uh, maybe we should discuss about the uh, auditing phase one to five uh, scope definition and about the uh, open voting result. So please go ahead to discussion, Arturo. Thank you, Hiroki. Uh, well, basically I, I've been reviewing the, the results. I think that uh, we, we have um, participated uh, all of us, or at least uh, all, all the people that uh, usually is attending to the calls. Um, from Telefonica, we we just uh, include uh, one, let's say one vote uh, that is a shared vision between uh, Victor Lopez, uh, Oscar Gonzalez, and and myself. Um, and seeing the the result, I think that uh, basically there is uh, six votes for the uh, option A and uh, five votes. Uh, no, four votes for option B as the, let's say, the, the preferred one. Um, so I think that, uh, well, uh, by majority, it's uh, been decided uh, option A. Um, what I say about uh, that the uh, Telefonica, we, we included just one vote because, I mean, maybe something that uh, we didn't, uh, let's say, specified uh, in, in the previous call uh, that uh, maybe it was uh, uh, a little bit more more fair maybe to to include uh, just one vote by by company or or institution uh, but um, uh, i mean i'm not uh, completely aware about uh, this kind of um, decisions uh, policy i i would really like if uh, someone from well from entity uh, entity sorry from from onf uh, will have let, let's say um a position about this but uh, anyway uh from from our uh, side from telefonica side uh, is okay i think that the majority has a vote for the um, option a and uh, i think that we can go ahead with uh, this uh, architecture and this and this option I, we we basically don't have uh, any objection about this in fact we were we prepare the session of today on the basis on this decision, basically. Um, uh, what I wanted to share today is basically um, Telefonica, let's say, uh, perspective regarding the, the option A. I think that is a reasonable step uh, in order to, to move uh, on with um, or, or to progress with the um, ODT and activity. In fact, it's something that uh, we have uh, approached uh, in the lab, uh, in Telefonica, in the last, in the last two months, um, as a consequence of an RFI that we uh, have launched some months ago. So we invited some uh, participants to to bring equipment to the lab and to test uh, their solutions, uh, and, and basically the architecture that uh, that we have tested in the lab is. Uh, is uh, very similar to to the one uh, let's say describe it but by the option a uh, architecture in in ODTN. so um, our idea it was to uh, maybe not today because we uh, well we finished uh, this uh, uh, last friday basically and we are still uh, uh, let's say digesting all the results and trying to prepare uh, some good documentation about them but uh, maybe in, in in the next section or in a couple of weeks uh, we would like to uh, present you uh, some of the of the results that we have obtained and some of the let's say uh, findings and, and question open question that they will be uh, let's say open uh, with this architecture and with the current uh, let's say version of the of the models that has been let's say proposed for the uh, interfaces uh, from the ODT and controller that in our case uh, is uh, well a hierarchical controller that is controlled the OLS through an open line system controller and directly the open terminals with the open config and 
and netcon junk uh, interface so as i said the, the, the architecture is the same uh, direct configuration of the open terminal devices uh, through open config uh, netconf and um, configuration of the media channels in the in the ols through an open line system controller using tapi uh, version uh, 2.0.2 so um, uh, I think that uh, this is, uh, I think, our our uh, our plan uh, to to contribute in this way in the in the following weeks. Uh, I think that it can be interesting because we can propose you or we can at least uh, share with you uh, how it was the the test cases that we have uh, tested, uh, which are the configurations that we have. Uh, uh, let's say use in order to to achieve these test cases and also we can uh, let's say uh, explore the conclusions and the limitations that uh, we have seen uh, regarding this architecture uh, basically to narrow down the scope of the phase 1.5 uh, of the ODTN uh, to analyze if someone else has uh, let's say different opinion or different thought about the what the, the the current version of the interfaces can allow us to do and and based on that maybe to to start uh, closing the scope of this one phase one of five and starting with the with the development i don't know if uh, this is something that it seems uh, reasonable to you okay great and so uh, I can go forward to the um, presentation material. Uh, yes, we can enter in the presentation material. Uh, basically, I, I included the, 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 the results of the poll. Mm -hmm. Well, open it and, and then we can see it. Okay, so I'll give you the presentation, presentation role. Okay, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. I don't know if it is the, the best way to do it, but basically I uh, uh, modified the presentation of uh, last week. So um, if you remember, uh, we were discussing about the uh, the, the dates updates about the, um, the phase one of five. Uh, I'm going not to enter uh, very much on this, but uh, I think that the only uh, thing that it was maybe not yet uh, close it was the ending date because uh, I think that is going to be depending on on many factors and also one of them it was the definition of the scope. So I'm going to mark it as uh, let's say open uh, from now. And um, uh, well, um, based on the poll results that uh, basically we have obtained uh, today, the idea will be to uh, to go for the, this option A, on which we will uh, let's say um, uh, let the um, uh, path computation features to the Open Line System controller. Uh, interface of the open line system is going to be TAPI uh, 2.0.2. Uh, I'm going to, let's say, to put this in green. Well, maybe mark or something. Well, okay, I, I, I can do it later, maybe. Uh, so, well, as I mentioned, it, the, the idea is that uh, we will go for uh, for this uh, 
this objective, this, this architecture. Uh, for sure, we need to uh, clarify details and uh, we will, uh, I think that uh, we need to focus in this section and the, the next ones on, uh, let's say, narrow down the scope and let's say, uh, answering all, all the questions that maybe the use cases um, can uh, let us arise. But, uh, well, um, I think that uh, at least all of us, we should uh, have clear uh, what is the, the the scope and the architecture that we are, uh, let's say, uh, proposing. And, and we focus just on, on closing details and let's try to refine the, the, this presentation uh, to, to make it a, a documentation of, of this uh, use case. Uh, so of this uh, phase one of five, sorry. And um, yeah, for instance, uh, in, the, in the next weeks, we should uh, go uh, on, on cleaning up a little bit uh, this presentation and uh, removing, let's say, uh, alternatives and uh, features that maybe are uh, uh, belonging to other uh, scope activity uh, scope uh, alternatives that we have discussed for the, for this phase uh, 1.5 and let's say focusing on on just um, uh, the the features or or the um, uh, characteristics of uh, this this option um as i mentioned it before uh, this was uh, the results so i counted uh, six uh, votes for the option a and, and four for the option b as I mentioned it before, so I marked it option A as, as the chosen one. Um, and I, as I was mentioning it also before, uh, Telefonica has uh, concluded uh, last week uh, the first phase of the partial aggregation test uh, based on, on an RFI that we launched some months ago. Uh, we have tested uh, more than one um, implementation of the NetConf OpenConfig uh, interface. Uh, we have uh, some findings about that. I uh, I would like to present them in detail and and to share it with you and analyze together because I think that it worked to uh, let's say to be a little bit precise on the findings and and the let's say. Uh, questions that uh, this activity that we launch uh, has uh, arisen in order to uh, have a fruitful discussion among uh, among us uh, regarding uh, how to let's say close or define the um, reference implementation that we are going to use in in ODTN for the configuration of the open terminals and also for the uh, configuration of the open line system. Uh, as uh, I mentioned it before, uh, more than one implementation uh, has been tested in, in our lab for the open config uh, OT interface and at least one implementation, uh, including all the relevant uh, services or aspects of TAPI uh, 2.0.2 uh, regarding the, the configuration of the media channels for the support of Allen Wakeland services in the in the open line service uh, open line system sorry what I'm saying um, I mean fully support is uh, with uh, the OTSI uh, extensions that they were available for the TAPI 2.0.2 that basically includes uh, the characterization of the connection endpoints after the media channel uh, connectivity service or connectivity service created in the in the media layer uh, has been created. Uh, that's the information necessary for uh, configuring afterwards the, um, the, the, the wavelength of, of the channel that is going to be configured in the, in the transponders or open terminals. Uh, well, I included some, uh, some points here, but uh, well, we will complete it um, during, during next week's uh, uh, basically, the test that we have been carrying out uh, has been done during the last two months. So, as I mentioned, it take, uh, conclude last week. That's why I, I didn't have the time to uh, uh, to include all the findings and conclusions here. Uh, and the idea is, as I mentioned, it to res to disseminate these results uh, as soon as uh, we we will have, uh, let's say, the um, uh, agreement with the with the suppliers uh, participating in the in the activity. We will find out if uh, whether we will let's say um, share a vendor agnostic uh, conclusions or 
or, or we will discuss with them how how this can be let's say disseminated in a way that uh, is not uh, let's say uh, damaging anyone or uh, uh, let's say being compliant with uh, let's say their um, the NDAs or the uh, agreements that we we have with them. Um, I don't know if you have any questions so far. Okay, so maybe we can um, continue with the use cases that they were, let's say, um, described uh, in the um, for the phase one to five uh, before we, let's say, uh, find out the, the the option or the alternative among the architecture that we were going to to follow. Probably there were some uh, assumptions or general. Uh, questions that they can be, um, let's say, answered uh, by the definition of the architecture that we have uh, done. So maybe we can uh, go reviewing uh, a little bit step by step all these uh, slides, and maybe we can, uh, let's say, modify and update the content uh, during this session if uh, we we agree. So. <clears throat> So basically, uh, first point is related to the discovery in the ODTN of the uh, of the resources. So um, the assumption that we have made is that the, the resources of the open line system are going to be exposed uh, in an abstracted way. So let's say, um, okay, I'm going to come back a little bit. Here is a uh, node uh, topology abstraction. Uh, on which basically we are assuming that at least we will be able to see um, the topology or I mean the, the, the network that we are uh, assessing as a, as a node with the um, own knowledge points that are representing the external uh, demarcation points of the system and attached to them uh, connectivity service endpoints or interface points that they allow us uh, from the ODT and controller to um, to to create uh, the services. Um, let's say that uh, this is the most simplistic way to to do it. We are, uh, let's say, uh, not taking into account uh, the possibility of uh, well of uh, seeing the the topology of the of the network at all. This. Uh, um, even if we do the, we didn't enter on on the extensions that the, the TAPI 2.1 is offering, it could be let's say um, exposed uh, in a way of uh, exposing nodes and links uh, and, and a topology of, of the network in a structured way. But I think that is clear for that the for option A, uh, what we have let's say um, agrees is just the, the node abstraction. So. Let's say that the discovery from the open line system, if you agree, from now will be a node abstraction with visibility only about the external demarcation points as own net node its point. and service interface points. Everyone uh, was sharing this idea uh, for the um, option A. Is anyone that uh, has a different uh, view or that it consider that the definition of the option A in this aspect uh, is different or was different? Uh, I agree with you about the discovery process. Mm -hmm. well, maybe we can put a key. single node abstraction with the visibility only about the external demarcation points. Okay. 
And uh, second part it will be the discovery of the open terminals. So basically here uh, regarding the the discovery of the of the of the physical components of the physical uh, terminals, um, we should refer us to the open config uh, platform platform uh, junk and extensions to refer as the, the the data model that is describing with open config the um, the, the model uh, I mean the devices sorry the, the open terminal um, maybe we should uh, well maybe we can leave it there. Uh, from the uh, honors perspective, we, we can use uh, behavior uh, for uh, this kind of uh, development. So we don't need to uh, fix uh, we where should we yeah 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 you're right yeah where should we uh, get the topology uh, information for discovery we we can uh, select uh, uh, which item from open config is uh, better to get the topology information later. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, but uh, then your proposal, um, it, it will be to define, uh, uh, let's say, the behavior of the um, the topology, uh, let's say, abstra abstracted from the actual interface that we are going to use, or, or which is yeah, your you're proposal. Right, yeah. yeah. So let's say that from your point of view, we should remove, let's say, at least from now, the references to the open config or to the tapi models right oh, no 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 um, it, it is important to decide uh, how to represent the uh, topology information uh, using tapi so and uh, above all uh, we, um, in my opinion we should use all knowledge point and sub interface point as an external demarcation point but uh, we don't need to decide uh, which uh, young leaf or container to use to uh, discover the uh, tabby knowledge point and service interface points. We can, we can, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, um, we should uh, limit their own points and service interface points. Basically, there are uh, uh, reference direct references to tapi uh, leaves or container uh, attributes. So that's what I, I I understood that you wanted to let's say keep it uh, a little bit uh, more agnostic from the from the model itself. Yes, uh, from uh, open config perspective. So, so that, that's right here. Okay. But, uh, okay, then. Um, so, basically, um, let's say the discovery part uh, from the OLS will be, um, uh, let's say, abstracted. Uh, we, we, I think that we have clear view about what it is the. Um, uh, let's say uh, idea of the topology that we are going to be retrieval, uh, retrieving from the from the OLS. But regarding the open terminals, uh, we should define how these open terminals are going to be represented in the uh, within the ODT and controller, right? Which That's is good. your idea? 
which is your idea, Iroki, uh, from NTT uh, about this um, open terminals uh, let's say representation? Are you uh, proposing to, let's say, to translate or to um, describe these objects, these uh, devices, with uh, TAPI as well? Oh, yes, uh, we should uh, define the uh, define how to represent the topic topology in the ODT and controller, but mm -hmm. uh, we we can uh, we can choose later uh, how to uh, get the topology information from uh, uh, transform open config transponder and topic based operating system controller. Uh, by using the behavior and technology of, uh, on us. Mm -hmm. So so we don't need Are to decide this? Uh, yeah, at this point. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, yeah, I do agree that the, I mean, the, the objective is to represent also the open terminals as, uh, let's say, um, nodes that can be, let's say, aggregated in a, a single topology that it can be exposed um in the in the mbi of the ODTN uh with with tapi so at, a, at that point uh, we we should uh, let's say define which is going to be our topology uh, for the um, uh, open line system and and the, the open terminals uh, based on on tapi and let's say uh, find out which is the um, the way that we are going to 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 use in, in the ODTN to make the translation or the, the mapping among the information that we are retrieving from the from the open terminals and the uh, topology objects that we are going to construct uh, in the in the LDTN. Um, regarding what you mentioned it about the the behaviors, um, so so basically your behavior is going to be I mean the behaviors that are defined in the in the LDTN. Uh, well, may, maybe this is something that maybe we can discuss uh, next week uh, when you will present maybe your uh, findings or developments that you did for the phase 1.0 because I think there you you use these behaviors, right? Yeah, all right. Um, I mean, yeah. you already I'll discovered give you the right. transponders and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, maybe it's going to be better if uh, you can introduce this, uh, maybe this concept, because uh, for instance, me, I'm not uh, really, really an expert on this. Uh, okay, so, so we can go maybe to the terminology um, point on which basically we propose a, a basic agreement in naming the different elements in order to be used uh, among the, the slides that we are uh, uh, creating. And, and be able to reference to, to the same thing. So the, the open line system input line ports uh, is what we are calling external open line system demarcation points. If you think there are um, other terminologies that uh, need to be, let's say, um, added here, uh, please, please feel free to, uh, to continue to extend uh, maybe this. Um, this this open point uh, maybe we can include a new slide here okay um so assumptions mm. We say here that the ODTN knows which is the open line system controller address, so there is no auto discovery. We also say that the ODTN knows which is the which is its terminal agent address, so uh, there is no auto discovery. And the physical connections between the open terminal line ports and the external optical demarcation points uh, of the open line system are also known. So there is, uh, let's say, this information configured in the, in the ODTN. Uh, as a configuration file. Uh, do you think it, this is uh, something, uh, I mean, this is correct? We should be a little bit more am ambitious in the scope or uh, which is your, your thoughts about this? Uh, 
and that's the correct, I think it's great. Okay. Um, the other thing that uh, also we we were uh, discussing it was that uh, it is going to be only possible to configure one media channel uh, on each uh, external demarcation point. So let's say that uh, um, no matter if we are talking about um, a flexible grid or a fixed grid, but each uh, let's say the chunk of spectrum that is going to be reserved from uh, between two external demarcation points or uh, external optical demarcation points uh, is going to be treated as a single media channel that is going to be let's say represented as a, a single connectivity service uh, in, in TAPI uh, from the from the open line system uh, do you share this um, this uh, assumption do you think that this uh, um, let's say uh, coherent with the use cases that uh, uh, you might expect or uh, with your implementations? Okay, anyway, someone has a comment, uh, maybe can uh, add it into, into the, the slide uh, in the following days. Uh, and, and we can review it together in, in next section. Uh, regarding the open line system, um, let's say that the open line system is going to represent a topology abstraction of the network. It's going to represent uh, the external demarcation points that uh, are uh, available for the creation of media channels. So we are assuming that the uh, uh, ODTN, I think that um, ODTN can request uh, the, the creation of a media channel between every pair of input ports. Um, this is basically saying that um, the topology is uh, representing um, Collect, uh, let's say, directionless uh, ports. Basically, uh, there is no restriction about which are the um, um, the connection that, that can be requested between two 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 endpoints. Um, it is somehow simplistic, but I think that is uh, uh, a scenario that is, uh, let's say, um, possible and. Um, accessible for for every open system uh, supplier so I don't think that there will be uh, uh, many many issues on on proposing this and, and stating uh, stating this so basically we are saying the availability will depend on occupancy and topology um, I will say here that um, or we I will add here that um, the OLS controller will eventually, uh, let's say, um, deny the um, creation of a media channel if there are not spare resources. Free spectrum in the network, as um, we are assuming that it is responsible of the of the path computation. Anyone has a comment on this? Okay. So next, the open line system controller uh, knows all physical information about the network. So we are, let's say, um, implying that um, it has the, no, the, the knowledge not only about the components that are discovered by its network, but also about the, um, uh, let's say, the, the plant, no? the, the, the physical uh, 
network that um, that is uh, being controlling. Uh, usually, uh, most of no. I mean, most most of us we are, let's say, um, used to uh, also to 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 use um, let's say uh, planning tools or that are provided uh, sometimes by the suppliers, uh, which uh, basically introduce the um, this information or can load this information and make the uh, the planning uh, based on based on it but um, somehow on an SDN environment we are assuming that this information should be known by the entity that is performing a path computation and which is the responsible of assuring uh, somehow um, um, a path uh, feasible between two endpoints uh, for a given uh, constraints so um, we are let's say assuming that in this case for this architecture it will be the open system controller and and the basically the two uh, physical parameters that we uh, understood that they will be not uh, straightforward to be let's say uh, inferred only from the from the components but maybe somehow it is needed to be configured in the in the SDN uh, controller is the, the the kilometers of the of the fiber and also the, the shared uh, risk groups. So also we, we stated here that um, uh, we assume that this information is, is known by the open system control. Okay, I think that the um, last point is, uh, let's say the less, uh, the, the one that is giving a little bit more freedom to, to the implementation and maybe we should be a little bit more precise on on defining the uh, the scenario but basically here it's uh, stating that uh, we are uh, going to um, somehow uh, propose a scenario or scenarios for this phase 1.5 that are not um, that the physical impairments are going to are not going to be the limiting limiting factor uh, why we are saying this uh, because uh, so far in tapi 2.0.2 we are not able to let's say uh, introduce uh, information um, of the signal that is going to be transported by the um, uh, media channel so it is not possible to um, somehow um, request to the media uh, to the open line system controller uh, precise. I mean, we are not giving to them precise information about which are the signal uh, requirements in terms of sensibility or uh, other other parameters uh, for the um, for the provision on, of the media or the media channel. So, open line system must know or must let's say uh, assume that um, the only validation that is needed is the con I mean the continuity among the the frequency uh, slot or the frequency channel uh, that is going to be assigned for the media channel and that the, let's say the, the physical impairments uh, is not going to be a limiting factor because otherwise uh, uh, we we will need the, uh, more information uh, provided in the, in the connectivity service request regarding which is for instance the, uh, uh, the receiver sensibility of the of the of the transponder in terms of OSMR, I think that uh, this will be the, um, uh, the information, and I think that this is uh, information that is uh, somehow um, putting us on on a different scope that is not the, the option A. Uh, do you agree with this uh, assumption? So Arturo, I just want to be sure I understand you're so so you're proposing to not have impairments be part of a scenario for now. And the reasoning is uh the, the last comment kind of threw me, you said this would not this would not put us on a footing for scenario A. I, I guess I'm sorry, could you repeat that last statement again, please? Uh my statement is that um having only a let's say 
uh, abstracted information about the topology. Uh, well, maybe maybe it's not that clear, but my, my assumption on my knowledge about the TAPI uh, 2.0.2 is that the uh, it's an interface that is not technology specific, so it's not allowing you to specify which is the um, uh, the receiver uh, information about um, about the transponders that are going to transmit the signal over the media channel. So somehow you are not able to transmit the information that is necessary by the open line system controller to to uh, properly calculate a physical impairment validation because you basically don't have information about the signal that is going to be transmitted over your system. This is if we are assuming that uh, the interface that we are uh, going to use is TAPI 2.0.2. Uh, we could uh, somehow change this or um, uh, discuss this for sure. Okay. Um... I mean, I, I think that the one, one question is, so what information is going to be available from, from, all right, well, sorry, let me back up a second. So option A is about the OL, the, of, of the, uh, of the physical this layer to be able to compute whatever path needs to be compute, computed and whether or not they're impairments or not, um, at least for option A are, irrelevant because it's not something that is, is, is a kind of information that gets exchanged between the um, the SDN controller and the OLS controller because uh, that's all encapsulated within the OLS controller and the OLS controller takes care of all that all that's coming down from the SDN controller is a request for connectivity connectivity between two uh, of the topologically visible ports of, of the underlying um, open line system or terminations of the open line system so i you know if the impairments are not a factor one way or the other if it's all done if it's all transparent i, I guess i don't understand the rationale for this assumption i mean i don't think it makes a difference i, I i'm just trying to get my head around it that's all my idea well uh, you can correct me if i'm wrong but uh, um if you don't i mean if the open line system has not in information i mean you cannot send information into the request about which is the optic i mean the, uh, the the signal that is going to be carried by the media channel how uh the open line system controller is going to carry out i mean it's, go, it's going to, to let's say uh, uh make a validation about the physical impairments it makes not uh, i mean you don't have a, a requirements about the the path computation on on that sense you just have inform i mean you have just uh, a request to uh, to create a media channel uh, between these two connection points. And uh, both, I unless you somehow you have this demarcation point on the on the on the boards of this open line system, which will take care that uh, with. So take, I mean, without uh, let's say knowing which is the sensibility of the transmitter, I mean the transponders, um, no matter which is the, the sensibility of the transponder, that the uh, signal is going to to be able to be uh, delivered uh, with a degree of quality. I, I don't know. I, I basically um, thought that uh, well, that without the uh, information about which is uh, the signal that is going to be transmitted. A open line system uh, controller will not be able to to let's say to uh, through a through a path. Well, I think the open line system would um, you know. So what what is going to be the service specification? Is it is it not only going to include the the two endpoints, the two ports, but also uh, the some characterization of the capabilities of the endpoint transponders, um, true or false, because if it doesn't include it, then it's completely up to the OLS to assign um, a channel and a you know and a channel width, of, and that's assuming that 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 it has knowledge of the transponder's capability to support that. Otherwise, the the OLS has to be told what 
frequency, uh, central frequency, say, and, and channel width um, would would be permitted, and then let the OLS determine if that's if that's doable. I, mean, I so I, I guess the question is, it, it in some sense comes back to, you know, who's managing the um, uh, the, the spectrum again? You know, I, I brought this up before, but somebody's got to have somebody. By that I mean the the SDN controller or the OLS controller has to be managing sort of the spectrum and the utilization. And the OLS controller has to have enough information about what the transponders are capable of so that when it finds a path, you know, it's going to be compatible with what the possible settings are for the transponder. Mm -hmm. uh, I, do, so, I do agree. Yeah, it, so it's a question of what, what, what parameters are being passed down to the OLS from the SDN controller in order to make the service request. Is it just endpoints or is it going to be more? And we, I guess we've talked about in earlier stages of this, we talked about passing things down like uh, the, 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 the central frequency and the channel width. Um, yeah, that, I mean, actually, uh, this is my point. Um, let's say with the um, what is currently available um, in the um, in the TAPI 2.0.2 OTSI extension are, is basically that um, you have all knowledge points which are uh, exposing, which is the uh, frequency. Uh, let's say uh, it's, it's called it a frequency slot pool or a slot pool or something like that. That basically basically characterize which are the, the frequency slots that is managing the system. So it can be WDN with a 50 gigahertz grid, or it can be flush with, with other different grid. And, uh, and then um, uh, you can basically request a service from that, uh, from the service endpoint that is associated to this knowledge point, but um, you don't have a way to specify um, I mean, uh, the open line system is going to provide you what it is capable to do. So um, somehow it's, I think that is missing some information for uh, some of the some of the use cases. Probably you will not be able to specify different uh, slot widths if you want because you don't have this uh, capability. You just, uh, I mean, the open line system is exposing you, which is the grid, and you can just pick up a channel from there. Um, uh, say that um, we could uh, state that okay um, the option A that we have chosen and we agree to uh, uh, to to carry out in this uh, in this phase um, is uh, going to uh, let's say to to exp the open system is going to expose uh, a just a limited um, uh, visibility of the topology but somehow we can extend the interface um for the service connectivity uh, in order to uh, to cope with the uh, with the requirements that uh, we are talking uh, right now and for that probably we will need to uh, let's say to to go and review which is the the newest version of tapi in order to uh, not uh, let's say constrain too much the scope of this uh, phase uh, 1.5 because probably um, we understood different things. I was maybe, uh, let's say, thinking about just the, the capabilities that the current uh, version of TAPI is uh, allowing you. And uh, uh, maybe in, on, in other people's uh, minds, there were other, uh, let's say, ideas. Uh, just want to clarify that my idea uh, of uh, option B is basically this. It was to, to basically, uh, let's say, to, to wait for new updates on TAPI 2.1 which will allow us uh, more degrees of flexibility on the type of uh, connectivity service that you can request to the open line system in terms of, for instance, the selection of the frequency channel uh, that you are going to request to the media, to the, open, op, uh, to the open line system uh, for, the, for the media channel or uh, information about, for instance, the, uh, well, uh, the, 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 the power in the the input and the output power in the external demarcation points in order to, let's say, to validate and that the, uh, this is something that the open terminals can um, achieve. But, well, I, I will stop to talk so, maybe. So, 
Yeah, so I, you know, it, it might be useful for, for us to go through the exercise of creating, creating a workflow uh, of, of, I mean, I think, you know, you're, you're kind of going along the right path here with the assumptions and everything and trying to clarify. Um, I, I, I think the, I think a good step would be to sort of, you know, care, uh, create a workflow between, and, and we can do this as a, as a team, uh, a workflow of what the, the steps are for um, the SDN controller to communicate under whatever TAPI assumptions and information and, and see with the OLS controller in that exchange on you know, step one, you know, a, a, a frequency is uh, uh, chosen by the ODTN controller. Step two, that, you know, what information, you know, and the two endpoints are a service is desired. And then step two is to, you know, communicate that down and then try to see exactly what's going to be missing here or what's needed to fully um, uh, realize that. Yeah, this is, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I, I, mean, I, I, I think, I it, think it, you understand what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, um, yeah. Because I think if you go through this process of uh, if, we, if we it's it's not all on you to do this by all means uh, if we go through this process of doing this and flesh this out uh, I I think it'll um, elucidate what what it is we have or, or don't have what assumptions we need to make um, I, I just feel like we're, we're it, it, this comes up all the time it's like what you we can specify the assumptions here but then what I guess what is unspecified is what what is the OLS controller capability? What are the, the, the consequences of not having full view of, of the spectrums or the trend of the OLS? I guess what the OLS controller is missing here is full understanding what the transponders are capable of. And what the SDN controller is missing, it might actually be able to, to poll the, the transponders and get some information about its capabilities, but then it doesn't have any idea of the spectrum and the viability of certain spectral channels to be assigned in the in the in the uh, in the in the in the line system, and so that's kind of what the rub is here. Uh, how how do you bring these two areas together in, in some way that, that is compatible? And I mean, I the the it still comes back to something I suggested a while back is sort of this iteration between the SDN controller and the OLS controller where the SDN controller is basically saying I want these endpoints and here's a collection of paths and then the SDN controller uh, sorry the OLS controller comes back with okay the these paths are possible on these uh, spectral channels and then now the OD, OD the SDN controller has to come back and say okay these transponders are capable of this or not so I mean it's sort of a two side uh, you know it's a mutual iteration between both of them to kind of converge to the point where we have an acceptable transponder capability in terms of the channel settings, the uh, channel widths, the powers, and the OLS is, is happy in terms of the uh, the ability to take one one of those one of those set of settings and propagate it through the system end to end between the two ports, and so the two have to converge, and it seems like there's this iterative process that has to occur. And so the workflow for that under a given set of assumptions of who knows what, the who being the two controllers, what they have exposure to information, the, the ODTN controller seems to have knowledge of the transponders, the OLS controller has knowledge of the impairments in the line system and, and uh, the spectrum utilization. So that seems to be sort of the, the sticking point in this always, uh, every time this comes up, in my mind at least. And so how do we converge to a solution? And so I I think it's, it's probably gonna result in some sort of iterative process to make that happen. Am I being clear in, in what I'm saying here? I I, I do agree and I, I understood uh, perfectly what you say. Um, I have a similar idea and and I think that it makes sense to, uh, let's say, to draw a, a workflow among the, the three components of the architecture and, and see, um, uh, which is the information that needs to be exchanged, basically, on, this, on each step. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And probably, as you mentioned, it, it will be necessary maybe to do a, a sort of um, a iterative process uh, in order to assure the, uh, the consistency of the service that you have uh, configured in, in both ends uh, and also in the, in the, in the open system. Um, no, I... 
Okay. Sorry, if yeah. I could just add one more one more thing, Arthur. I know we're running short on time, but um, if one was to take an iterative approach like we just discussed, one benefit of it is that um, it has it's applicable in either the when impairments matter case or when impairments don't matter case. Because if impairments don't matter, then the OLS is always going to return a solution. Um, because you know, for example, in a in a in a in a in a network where you have short distances and and uh, you know the, the the impairments are not building up enough to really matter. And mm -hmm. so, in in that case, like a like a metro environment, for example, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that 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 would be that that would match there. But also in in a, in a, when there's an impaired situation that is you know longer haul. Um, then this approach would also work there. It's, it's going to be a little bit slower. They're probably requiring more iterations, perhaps. Um, but it's, I mean, it's an applicable approach in either case. And so I think it, uh, it's sort of a hybrid solution between A and B in some sense. Um, yeah. In, in that, you know, it can support either, depending on what approximation the network is operating under. So there really are kind of two cases where impairments matter and where impairments don't matter. And when impairments don't matter, then the entire piece E can be computed in the SDN controller, and it, it will be right because um, there's, you know, it, it has enough information logically. If it has enough information about the topology, at least, to compute mm -hmm. that into InPath, it will be correct. So, you know, it's it's one of these situations where we can maybe come up with a an approach between A and B where we're accommodating the approximations of whether impairments matter. Yeah, I think that uh, somehow. Uh, um... Yeah, I, I think that the approximation that you made uh, about uh, if, if physical impairments matter or not matter is, is the right one in order to, to basically to choose uh, which is the, the features that they are going to be implemented and, and, and the extension of the um, uh, between a, a option A and option B because my understanding about option A is that the, uh, with the current, let's say, uh, support of that B, uh, it is not basically possible to take into account the physical impairments to assure uh, right. a long-haul transmission. So for me, option A was, uh, okay, mm, you need to narrow down the scope to a not uh, physical impairments aware or not physical impairments, let's say, um, important for a short, uh, uh, small network scenario for Metro or, or something like that. But if you uh, introduce some of the extensions that are going to be, let's say, uh, proposed for, for TAPI, 2.1, then maybe you are uh, introducing the possibility to, to compute the, the physical impairments and, and to go for, for uh, let's say, more um, complex scenarios and more rich, in our opinion, as well. Uh, so, okay, right, I think that, that would require... Good... Please go I'm sorry, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say, but and then if, if more topological detail could be exposed, I mean, to do in-path in computation in the SDN controller would would require being able the the SDN controller being able to uh, query the uh, OLS controller and obtain some view of the topology so you can compute a path right it has to have knowledge of that topology it just can't be a request at this point it has to be able to have some knowledge of the topology uh, and get that at, through the topology the TAPI topology service if enough detail is exposed. So I think TAPI 2.02 supports uh, a reasonably rich exposure of the topology. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, so, but basically, uh, sorry, I, 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 no, I'm a little bit confused because um, my opinion is, okay, one of the, let's say, um, agreements that I think that is clear for everyone here is that we are saying, okay, uh, path computation feature is going to remain on the in the, in the open line system controller, right? So um, somehow uh, who is needed all, who is needing all the information is the open line system controller, but not only about the topology that it has it because it's controlling the network, but also about the transponders. So the information that you should pass in the request for the creation of the media channel it's based on the capability of the transponders about the signal that are going to be transmitted, right? Yeah, no, that's that is that it. What was one of the driving uh, assumptions about option A is that uh, it 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 avoids having to implement 
end-to-end uh, uh, path, -end path computation in the SDN controller, even if it's an approximate level uh, version of it. So that was one of the, the major selling points of option A in that, you know, in terms of just time spent, uh, it, it would, um, we, would, we would not have to do that, that kind of level of detail. Um, so yeah, that, I guess the question was about, um, you, you know, looking at the network as, as just a set of endpoints uh, to request services amongst or um, having more detailed knowledge of that connectivity for other mm -hmm. topological um, usage such as maybe just visualization yeah uh, visualization or maybe it can be also for the path constraints or if for the for the enjoy the joining right. between services and so on there are many many drivers among the the topology exposure even only for as you mentioned before visualization or for the this uh, uh, path constraints. Um, even if you don't, let's say, um, implement any path computation on the ODTN controller, I, I acknowledge that it is. Uh, uh, there are also benefits on on exposing uh, more information, uh, and somehow um, it is not uh, going to. Well, well, it will introduce I mean, more. Discussions. Yeah, but in the, in the example that you also alluded to, just just in what you just said, uh, for example, disjointness, I, I do know that it's important sometimes for um, an enterprise to connect um, pairs of points amongst its set of, say, in a WAN, uh, um, uh, that, are, uh, that are disjoint paths, paths that are disjoint from each other between pairs of points of its, you know, uh, international footprint or national footprint of its set of enterprises. You know, just for uh, business uh, sustainability, survivability, uh, continuity kind of uh, reasons, and how how would you specify that if you're just requesting, you know, at a larger sense, if you a controller is requesting connection between endpoints, how how does it uh, how can it guarantee that that uh, one path is disjoint from another path in that sense? So that's you, you know there has to be some additional information that's aware made aware either to the OLS or the path computation has to be done um, in the controller where the controller is able to impose, uh, sorry, the SDN controller is able to impose those kind of constraints. It's there, you know, it's, it's we're, we're in kind of a situation where it, by splitting the specialization <laughs> between the controllers, we're introducing kind of new problems of what this new fractured system is capable of, right? Uh, yeah, I know, will just say that um, it's a. I I don't think that it's a matter of let's say uh, constraining the um, the capabilities that the network can al can allow us to to have as a user, for instance, or operator, uh, but to constrain uh, let's say the scope of the use cases that can implement it in this phase um, by yeah. by the. By the capabilities that are going to be requested by the uh, from the op open line system controller uh, and implemented also by the SDTN. Uh, anyway, I think that is uh, a good starting point, uh, well, not a starting point, but maybe to coming back to the discussion that we were having maybe one or two months ago, but uh, with a little bit more clear ideas about what we uh, actually actually want. Uh, I will try to include. Uh, this uh, last two or three uh, points that you open it, uh, Gary, uh, in the in the notes, and and let's uh, continue discussing it uh, in in next uh, session. Um, Sounds uh, good. I don't know if you have any any more comment. Anyone else has a question or comment? Okay, I wanted to also to to say that uh, I will I won't be um, available in, in the next call uh, next week because I will go on holidays uh, until until next uh, not next Monday but the the other one on twenty third. So in in two weeks I will be uh, available again uh, in, in this call. Uh, if you will continue, uh, I mean, next week, uh, my colleague Oscar will uh, join join to the into the call. Um, so please, uh, well, share the invitation. You know, if you are interested in on presenting, for instance, the uh, as you uh, as you said before, the um, 
the phase 1.0 uh, results and, and maybe we can continue with the phase uh, 1.5 uh, discussion uh, in two weeks if, uh, if you agree. Uh, I'd like to share the phase 1.0 uh, result uh, with technical guys, so maybe we should skip the next meeting and we should continue. Okay. To, yeah. We can skip next meeting next week and we continue all together in in 15 days. Yeah, got it. Okay, perfect. That's uh, great from my side. Okay, thank you very much all for attending to the to the call. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank, thank, thank you. Thanks, bye, bye. Thank you very much. Bye, thank you guys. Bye-bye.